ఎస్టీలను ఆదుకోవాలని మా యొక్క బీఆర్ఎస్ డిమాండ్ చేస్తుంది థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ శ్రీమతి మోసం నూర్ Thank you, Deputy Chairman, sir. And I thank my party, All India Tinumul Congress, for this opportunity. I rise to speak on the Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order, Second Amendment Bill, 2022. This amendment adds 37 under Tamil Nadu to the schedule in Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order, 1950, including Narikovaran and Kurivikaran tribes to the list of STs. An estimated 30,000 individuals or 8,500 families in Tamil Nadu belong to this community, forming under 0.1% of the state's population. They were classified as more backwards, most backward classes till now, but that put them in competition with more affluent communities. For example, in 2005, the percentage of STs below the poverty line in, line in rural Tamil Nadu was 32.1%, that's below the national schedule type average of 47.3%. But that of rural OBC and others was 19%. The local Lokur community in 1965 and the Joint, community, uh, Joint Committee of Parliament in 1967 had recommended the inclusion of this community, pointing out their deprived and vulnerable situation. In 2013, the Union Minister of Tribal Affairs on the recommendation of the Tamil Nadu government and with approval of the Registrar General of India had agreed to the proposal for inclusion of these communities. Yet, it has taken nearly a decade for the government to bring an amendment to include them and extend to them the benefits and safeguards which they require and are entitled to. The 2011 census said 8.6% of the country's population was composed of tribal people, amounting to 10.4 crore people. I urge the government to conduct the 221 census at the earliest so we can update our data and provide benefits to our most vulnerable citizens. There is a need to release the previous data of the socio-economic caste census and conduct the 2021 SECC as well. Let me share some more data about the situation of scheduled tribe people in today's India. As 2022 study by Research Institute for Compassionate Economics says that life expectancy of Adivasi men was five years lower and Adivasi woman was four years lower than the so-called upper caste Hindus. The NCRB of 2021 report says atrocities against STs have increased by 6.4% and 12,159 cases of atrocities against STs were pending at the end of the year. There was also an increase in violence against Adivasi women at 26.8% with rape cases against STs accounting for 15% of the total rape cases. 95.4% of cases of atrocities against STs were pending trial at the end of the year. And what is the government doing? To pave way for an ecologically devastating Niti Ayok proposed project of the Andaman Nicobar Island Integrated Development Corporation, the government has approved the destruction of forest homes of the particularly vulnerable tribal group called Shompen and the scheduled tribe Great Nicobaris. Now, new Eklavia model residential school guidelines also require 15 acres and for the school to be set up in sub-districts where more than 20,000 scheduled tribe people reside, comprising at least 50% of the population. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Social Justice and Empowerment had recommended that the criteria be reviewed pointing out that many forest and hill districts would have trouble finding 15 contiguous acres of land for setting up for the school, and scattered population of tribal people will have to travel far distances to access education. I urge the government to review these requirements. The educational situation of scheduled tribe communities also raises concerns. As per 2011 census, the literacy rate for scheduled tribes was 59% as compared to 73% for the general population. The gross enrollment ratio of SC and SG students at the undergraduate level standing at 23% and 17.2% respectively is short of the national average of 26.3%. 
The Central Education Institutions Reservation in Admission Act 2006 mandates 15%, 7.5%, 27% quotas for SC, ST, and OBC students. However, the acceptance rates of applications for SC, ST, and OBC in IMMs has been below 4% for the past four years. IIM Ahmedabad received 78 PhD applications from STs between 2018 and 19, 21, and 22, but only two have been accepted. IIM Bangalore accepted only three out of 188 applications by STs, and none out of the 52 applications by the STs. Only 2.5% or 137 ST students out of 3,430 eligible applicants were admitted across all IITs in the last year. In contrast to that, there are 23.51 SC and 5.8% ST of the total population in my home state of West Bengal. According to 211 census, reports of the ST's literacy rate in India was male 68.5% and female 49.4%. The West Bengal ST literacy rate was male 74.15% and female 43.51%. We have put in place an ST, SC, SC ST pension scheme to take care of the vulnerable elderly in these communities. We have also established various lending programs to help grow entrepreneurship in these communities. Bengal is the only state in India where a dedicated scheduled caste advisory council has been set up. This is our vision for the welfare of the scheduled caste, which is sadly not being mirrored at the union level. Our constitution recognizes group identity and its importance for social empowerment of the marginalized. Via these provisions, the constitution balances between the history of injustice faced by certain groups and personal liberty. People must be given an assertion of their group identity. Treating every person as an individual would not be sufficient to gain equality and equity of personhood, as it will ignore the different lived realities and caste tribe identity which require the protection of law. It is the duty of the state to ensure these protections reach people in the best way possible in both letter and spirit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mosam. <clears throat> Honorable Tiruchu Sivaji. Thank you, Deputy.